Hey, this is Joe. Today we're going to work on changing the transmission fluid in this 2006 Dodge Caravan. This Caravan has the 3.3 liter V6 engine and the automatic transmission. The parts for this job cost $40 plus tax. We bought 5 quarts of ATF plus 4 automatic transmission fluid. Make absolutely sure to get the plus 4 variety when you're shopping. This is a Duralast part number TF139 filter. It costs $9.99 and it comes with the instructions, a new pan gasket, and the new filter which has the O-ring already installed on it. To get started, if the caravan is cold, let it run for 5 or 10 minutes or take it for a short drive to warm it up. Then pull it onto either a lift, some ramps, or set it on some jack stands for easier access to the transmission. Inside the engine bay, it's easy to tell that we've got the 3.3 liter V6. Directly to the right of it, or towards the driver's side, is the yellow transmission dipstick. Looking underneath the vehicle, we can see the transmission pan directly under the driver's feet area. To the passenger side of that, we can see the larger engine oil pan with the white engine oil filter in front of it. The transmission pan must be removed when the fluid is changed for two reasons. First, the pan has no drain plug, so dropping the pan is the best way to get the fluid out. And secondly, the only way to access the filter is by removing the pan. Around the perimeter of the pan, there are a total of 14 10 mm bolts that hold the pan in place. Plus, there's one 10 mm nut right there that holds a little bracket onto the pan. You'll need to remove all of these in order to get the pan to drop. Removing the bolts is pretty simple, but you might want to keep in mind that it's probably a good idea to leave at least the four corner bolts in until the very last so that the pan doesn't accidentally drop on you when you're not paying attention. If you're really lucky, you can tap on the pan and get it to pop loose. In our case, the glue that was on there was just too strong and it wasn't going to happen with the tapping. Using a one inch putty knife, we were able to kind of slide it in between the transmission itself and the pan and just kind of work it along around the edges to get the pan separated and to cut through the glue. After cutting about halfway around, I could tell it was ready to come out. Then it's just a matter of taking out those last couple screws and popping the pan off. With the pan out of the way, you've got a great view of the filter. All you've got to do is grab a hold of it, give it a little tug, and it should pop right off. I put the old transmission filter onto this piece of newspaper to take a look at it and make sure there wasn't anything that was completely out of the ordinary. Also, take a look inside the transmission pan for the magnet. This magnet collects all the little tiny pieces of metal that float around in your transmission fluid. The black metal sludge on this particular magnet is absolutely normal for a transmission. What you don't want to find are any larger pieces of metal or fragments that might indicate that something had come apart inside the transmission. If you see anything like that, you might need to take it into a shop and see if they can take a look at it. Clean off the magnet and set it aside for reinstallation back into the transmission pan. When we removed the pan, not all the glue came off with it. You have to be very careful not to scratch the soft aluminum of the transmission, but you also need to get the old glue off to provide a smooth sealing surface for the new gasket. I like to use a nice new sharp straight razor to get it off. Once the gasket surface is scraped smooth, Use a clean shop cloth to wipe away any leftover particles. Now back to the pan. It's the same procedure here. With the pan all cleaned out and the gasket surface ready for the gasket, you can lay the gasket out over the pan. As you can see, the gasket itself is still pretty wrinkled up and it doesn't really hold itself in place, but here's a quick trick. Stick some of the screws back up in from the bottom and just push them through the gasket. The holes are actually tight enough that it will hold the gasket in place while you're holding the pan up and getting it started with the screws. Back up under the vehicle, you're ready to put on the new filter. Make sure the O-ring is still installed. 
Line it up using the little pegs on the filter side that fit into the holes on the transmission side. Then give it a few taps to seat it. Once the pan is installed, it will hold it firmly in place. Make sure you remember to put the magnet back into the pan and lift it up into place. Then start the bolts by hand. Once all the bolts are snugged up, we're going to do two passes with the torque wrench. The first pass is at 80 inch pounds. In order to get all the bolts torqued evenly, you'll need to work out a sequence where you start on one side of the pan, torque it there, then switch over to the other side of the pan, torque a bolt there, then switch back to the first side, and keep alternating around until you get all the way around the pan. Then increase the torque on the wrench to 120 pounds and repeat the sequence again torquing all the bolts to the final torque of 120 inch pounds. With the pan in place and torque to spec, you're now ready to refill the transmission with automatic transmission fluid. By pouring all the old fluid out of the catch pan into this one gallon milk jug, I'm able to determine that I used about one gallon of fluid and therefore need to replace about one gallon of fluid. Pull the dipstick and insert a funnel, then pour in the four quarts of fluid. I figure I actually lost a little bit to spillage and so I added in a little bit more on top of that. With the fluid replaced, reinstall the dipstick and start the vehicle. Apply the brakes and cycle the transmission through the gears. Then with the transmission in park, go back and check the fluid level on the dipstick. Add more fluid as needed and check for leaks and lower the vehicle back down to the ground. If everything looks good, run the engine for a while to warm up the fluid, then cycle the transmission through all the gears and check the fluid level one more time. 